Flow Immersive is an amazing data visualization software. Just look at these awesome projects that people have been able to create. How can you create stuff as cool as this? Well, you clicked on the right video. Let's dive in. Now, just like PowerPoint or Google Slides, Flow is a software made for presentations. And similar to how your standard presentation is divided up into slides, a flow is comprised of different steps of your data presentation. Okay, hold your horses. Before we dive into the flow editor quite yet, we need to tackle the first step of our data presentations, finding the data. Unfortunately, finding data can be the hardest step of the process. If it's any consolation, everyone struggles with this. Starting off, of course you can rely on a good old Google search, but if nothing of you surfaces, I would try one of these. First, one really great site is Kaggle. Searching here under datasets produces a great deal of results. You can also refine your searches by using these tags to the right. Kaggle can also be nice just to browse datasets if you're still unsure of a topic. Another good one, or so I've been told, is Reddit. And I haven't actually used it, but I hear it's a fantastic place for browsing or just asking for help when it comes to hunting for data. Both the links are in the description. Now, there are two crucial aspects your dataset has to get right, so make sure to lock these away. First, when you found a dataset you like, make sure to download it as a CSV file. That is the only type that Flow will accept. Second, and this one's a bit trickier, ensure that every category of information is grouped together in its own column. So here, let me give an example. This data set is basically a timeline that consists of the average tons of CO2 released per person in a particular year. This data set is not ideal. And the reason is because notice how each year is separated into its own column. Bad. Instead, this year is almost exactly the same data, but now in the proper orientation. Our time, aka the year, has been reduced into a single column. This is significant because when we go into the flow editor and select an axis for a graph, we can simply select year rather than a laundry list of individual years. For the rest of this tutorial, I'll be using this nice simple data set I found on cars. If you want to follow along, go ahead and download it. The link is in the description. Okay, after you've logged into your account, clicked the big create flow button, and named it something of your liking, you should now be in the flow editor. This is where you'll spend your time manipulating the data into a work of art. Something to keep in mind is that the flow editor is subject to change. So depending on when you're watching this, yours might look a little bit different. Luckily, we are covering the very fundamentals of the software, so regardless when you're watching it, it shouldn't be too different. Okay, so this center blue space is the room where the flow will actually preside. This is where it will show up. And the surrounding black boxes are the options used to edit and manipulate the flow. And so if you divert your attention over to the left-hand side of the screen, this is where the overarching categories are. And when these categories are clicked on, the corresponding attributes will show up on the right. So here I'll cover the two categories, data and swarm, since they'll be used in 99.9% .9 of flows. Luckily, the data attributes are very straightforward. So here's all you have to do. When uploading new data, you just have to click create new, which you'll have to do for pretty much all the sections, then upload slash view, and then choose the CSV file you want to upload. That's it. And you can do this as many times as you want to have as many data sets as you want. Now that we've uploaded our data, let's move on to the Swarm tab. And basically, Swarm just refers to how the data points are actually laid out. This section is the center point of flow, We're probably where you spend the majority of your time. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to be quite as easy as the Data tab. The Swarm tab is much more nuanced, but luckily, it's laid out in a fashion where the best way to edit is to just simply move down the page. Most of the options are fairly self-explanatory, so I'll only cover the ones that are crucial to get your Swarm up and running. All right, so let's get down to brass tacks. Now, we're in the Swarm tab, and like I said before, let's just move down the page. Name, Swarm 1. That's fine. If you want to call it something else, be a little creative, whatever, I'm just going to leave it as Swarm 1. Visible on this step, and this means it's checked. Yes, please, I want it to show up on this step. If I turn that off, then it will be invisible. We can't see it. All right, data source. Now, we're selecting a data source out of the data tab, and luckily, since we just uploaded this, it's right here. Now, what in the world are these? These are all the random points. Each point represents one row of the data set, and it's just in a random orientation right now, because as you can see in the chart type, we have just type random. Now we skipped over perspective. Don't worry about it. We're going to come back to it. It's actually very important. All right, so before we go any further, I wanted to stop and do some quick notes about controlling your view slash your camera. 
First off, use the left mouse button or mouse one to rotate your view around the origin. Second, use the right mouse button to drag your view around perpendicular to your camera. And third, use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Now, constantly use these to move your swarm around and view it from different angles. But keep in mind, when you leave this step and come back, you'll be put into the default camera. However, if you mess around with the view and find an angle that you really like, you can click set camera for this to become the new default. All right, I don't have enough time nor the patience to step you through everything about flow. There's already how-to videos and a step-by-step -step tutorial right here on the homepage. Instead, I'm gonna do a speed run, briefly touching on each feature of flow and with the hopes of quickly giving you an understanding of what the software can do. All right, ready, set, chart type. Scatterplot is the most common, so I'm gonna select that. Now let's pick columns for the axes. I really don't care, so I'm gonna select random ones. And voila, we have our scatter plot. We can make it bigger, smaller, whoa, whatever. Size, size adjusts the size of the individual data points. It can also make the sizes fluctuate based on a certain column if you select scale values. Same can be done with color, except it's with color. The connections dropdown is the exact same thing as the connections tab over to the left. As a matter of fact, if you click create new, it'll just bring you to the connections tab. And this is used to form connections between categories of points. The labels dropdown also corresponds with the labels tab on the left and adjusts the numbers on the axes. Positioning is for, you guessed it, the positioning of the flow. And whenever you see the circle with a minus in it, click that to reset the value to zero. On select means when you select the data point, certain info will pop up. On rollover does the exact same thing, except you don't have to click, you just hover. And now keep in mind, you can only see these when either running the flow or viewing it separately out of the editor. Oh, the filter is cool. You can filter out some of your data and only show bits and pieces at a time. Uh, axis options control the options of the axes too. Okay, over here. You can create a map and then graph your swarm to it. And uh, we already did these two. You can add some text, maybe a title or something if you want, I don't know. You can add an image, maybe that could be a title if you have something against the text tab. Uh, you can add a line apparently, never actually used this. And finally, with the environment, you can change the background of the flow. Wow, okay, that was a lot. You still listening? Nice. Okay, I wanna mention one more thing, and I lied because I wanna mention two more things. Uh, first off, adding steps and changing perspectives. All right, now no matter what state your flow is in, and it's okay if it doesn't look quite as pretty as mine, I want you to go up here and click add step, and then hit duplicate. So right now we're on step two. And you can tell if you look down here at the what's called the train track, and you can see the diamond, so that's an indicator of where we are, is on the second tick. And if I slide it over, we can go back to the first step and then back to the second. You can also use these arrows down here to move between steps. All right, so now I want you to be on the second step, go to the swarm tab, and just make any change you want to your swarm on this step. So for instance, I'm gonna change the color of my points from red to blue. All right, so now we only change this in step two, right? So when we go back to step one, they should still be Uh-oh. What in the world? This is because when we added a step, we didn't copy and paste all the information from the first slide. Rather, it's the exact same objects from the first slide. So whatever we change here will ripple through time and space and steps. Now we can fix this if we add another perspective, which I'm going to rewind and show you the correct way to do it. So, yeah, yeah, all right, so I'm back to having red points, and now I want to go to the second step, and what I'm trying to do is make these points blue, but keep the points in the first step red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new perspective, and now I can call it whatever, I'll just call it blue points or something like that, and now I can feel free to make changes without altering the other step, and this is because we are editing it within a different perspective. As you can see, the first step is in default. So right now, if I switch back to default, I'll have red points. And if I switch to these blue points, I'll have blue points. Now, creating a perspective can be annoying at times and incredibly easy to forget, but it pays off. Since we're editing the same object the whole time, we can watch these points majestically animate from perspective to perspective. This might not sound very important, but these animations are incredibly effective at not only retaining a viewer's attention, but also bridging steps together to create a cohesive narrative. Before you go, let's talk about saving your work. Now, you probably notice this green notification flashing up in the top right every now and again. That's the flow editor automatically saving your work every 30 seconds. You can also click the button in the upper right to save your work. And whenever you click the home button in the top left, your progress will be saved. Overall, I'm glad if this tutorial has been helpful. 
but the main way to get better is just spending time messing around with the interface. Luckily, a lot of it is pretty intuitive, like font size. Oh, I wonder what that does. And if you're feeling extra saucy, you can go up here and click the advanced button to unlock extra customizable options. Alright, it's quitting time. Enjoy working with the future. Toodles.